Fantastic. Okay, well, so as always, we are super delighted that everybody is joining us today. And I want to say welcome to the Appy Hour. We have a lot of great content that is designed today to help you with navigating your e-commerce clients. So this is a biggie. I want to make sure that um, you know, we have lots of chat conversations going on because like many of you, I have clients who are uh, wanting to utilize the internet in order to make sure that they still keep up their sales because right now a lot of their brick and mortar stores are closed down. So that means that we need to make sure that we've got great resources to uh, help our clients and support them with e-commerce needs. So welcome to the Appy Hour. And we're going to be simplifying the e-commerce accounting with our sponsor today, Sync with Connects. I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself while you're getting our Facebook Live going, Heather. Yep, still working on it. I've got Twitter. We're live on Twitter. We're live on YouTube. Still working on Facebook. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'm Liz Scott. And like many of you, I've got an accounting firm that is based out of Oklahoma. And what we do is focus on QuickBooks small business clients and the ecosystem of apps that revolve around those clients. And it allows us to have a lot of fun with being able to find new apps, help them with apps, streamline workflows. And then in the e-commerce world, I, I like to focus there because it's interesting, it's ever changing, but you need a way to be able to pull in that data so that way it's reliable whenever you're looking at financial statements. That is why I'm excited about our guest that's here today. But before we introduce our guest, I'd like to allow Heather a minute to introduce herself unless you're still working on Facebook. No, I can totally stop and, and introduce myself. Um, my name is Heather Satterley. I am the owner of Satterley Training Consulting out of Portsmouth, Rhode Island. Super happy to be with all of you today. I saw a bunch of you in the VCon as well. I wasn't presenting like Liz was, but I was had my, my fingers actually got a workout today with the chat. So I was helping everybody behind the scenes in the chat. So if I saw you there today, hey, um, and I'm so excited about our happy hour tomorrow. That's going to be super fun. So, um, and I'm also presenting a, uh, an introduction to app session tomorrow, which will be really awesome too. So hopefully I'll see some of you guys there uh, in the intro to app session. So, um, so my firm is like Liz, I focus on technology uh, in the accounting space. So I work mostly with accounting firms, um, bookkeepers, accountants that are looking to uh, introduce apps into their practice and solve problems for both themselves and their clients using technology. So it's kind of what I do. I also have a bookkeeping and tax practice uh, called Back Office Ally, where I help small business owners um, with their day-to-day -day accounting um, and tax needs. So that's me. Thanks, Liz. I'm going to go back to trying to figure out this Facebook thing. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, I want to give our guests an opportunity to also get introduced. So we are lucky to have three of the team members for, with, from Sync with Connects with us today. And so Joseph, you're the founder and CFO. Do you want to take a minute to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, I'm Joseph Anderson. I'm the founder and CFO and also CEO of the uh, of the company. I founded the company back in uh, January of 2010, and I've been working uh, with QuickBooks for you know well over 10 years. Well, we're glad you're here, and we're glad that you created a nice solution because we all struggle with e-commerce accounting. So, yay! <laughs> Michelle, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, Michelle Booth. I am an account manager here. I've been working with Joe at Connex for just about five years now. Um, I'm on the sales side of things now, but pretty intimate with the tech support side of things as well. I've done that role here in the organization. So I primarily talk to pre-sales customers answering questions and helping them with trial setups um, to get set up on our software. So looking forward to today. So thanks for having me. Oh, fabulous. And Dora, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Dora Farkas. So I started working at Canax at the beginning of 2020. I'm the marketing and partners manager. And um, if any of you are interested in the partners program at Canax, I will be 
your point of contact. And we'll also be talking about that at the end of the presentation today. And I just want to thank Liz and Heather for organizing this. Uh, well, you've been just absolutely fabulous and fun to work with. And you've got so much content today that we are going to get started. But I do have a question. So Joseph, <laughs> I think I need to know about that picture. <laughs> Your bio picture has you standing where? Uh, uh, yes, I was a vacationing in New Hampshire and there's a, a submarine museum in Portsmouth. And it's a museum from the 1950s that used to, uh, I guess the submarine used to be used for training purposes. So I like to say that I'm the captain of the ship and I'm driving the boat, so. <laughs> it's great, it's a great picture, <laughs> that's fun. I like it that you shared that as your your profile picture too, because it tells you know everybody that you are a human having fun in the world too, or at least pre-COVID having fun in the world. So we want to say thank you to our Champagne Level uh, sponsor, Right Networks. They have been with us all year during the 2020 uh, year as our Champagne sponsor. Many of you know them as the support and uh, the provider of our access for remote clients that are in QuickBooks desktop. So we want to make sure that we say thank you to them. And then we also want to say thank you to our Sync with Connect sponsor today, because that's what we're going to be talking about, simplifying e-commerce accounting. And we want to go ahead and talk about what it means to simplify the e-commerce accounting, why it's necessary, and I'm going to go ahead and just dive into when we think about our e-commerce clients, one of the things that makes it challenging is the various sales channels. And so you have to first start with some of the basic details and saying, okay, what does a sales channel mean? You have to kind of understand that because your client's also learning it too. Right now, I've noticed that during this pandemic, people are very, very forgiving whenever it comes to learning. We're all doing something new. Everybody is welcoming uh, questions and, and cheerfully answering them. So when we think about the sales channels, this is the way that your, your goods get out into the world. So there's sales channels that are considered marketplaces like Amazon. So the sales channel already exists. You go on there, you list a few items, and boom, you're selling. Etsy is the same type of platform. eBay is the same type of platform. The other option is something like a web store. And the web store is going to be something that's branded to your client's name, branded to your name. So if I was going to be selling accounting lifeline goods, I might call it, you know, the accounting lifeline store. And so that's going to be your web store. Whenever you have these web stores, that's where it gets a little trickier and there's more complex pieces that are involved. And I'll go ahead and advance to the next part and talk about the different components. So you've got your solution, your e-commerce solution, and then you've got all of these different things that kind of revolve around it. Shopping carts, that's part of your sales channel solution. So I can go and I can go to a web store and put things in my shopping cart, and then I can look at and make sure those are the things I want to buy. The merchant services, that's going to be the payment area where I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna actually process my payment uh, of the goods that I put in my shopping cart. Sales tax, this is one of those components that we would need to make sure that based on whatever type of web store our client is using, that they've got sales tax being calculated properly because there is a sales tax liability that also comes with selling online. And then also marketing. So one of the things that's really nice about the um, selling on Amazon is they actually have marketing built into it. So you can say, hey, I wanna subscribe to a piece of marketing and they're going to launch those campaigns for you. Now, managing all of those various bits and pieces also means that you need to manage the fees that are involved in that. And that's another thing that sometimes I feel like our web stores and market, um, um, they, they, they kind of hide some of those fees. And so it's sometimes difficult to parse those out and be able to track them to see exactly how profitable were each of these sales channels. So it's important to think about all of these as components that kind of stand alone, and then how do you get that data into QuickBooks? So that's a process all in its own. And if we think about, let's just take apart a couple of segments of that, that big circle and all of the revolving components. If we just think about the merchant services piece, authorize.net sometimes can live inside of your sales channel, and sometimes it actually processes outside. 
So you need some type of way of connecting to the sales data and connecting to the payment piece to be able to incorporate that into QuickBooks because the goal is to pull really good reports, but we also know that e-commerce accounting and bookkeeping can be cumbersome because it's difficult to then reconcile. If it's not coming in in a method that we're able to easily reconcile, it creates a lot of challenges. So that's why we have invited Sync with Commerce um, um, uh, uh, being able to uh, come on and, and show us to how to connect and pull in that data so that way we've got a good platform for being able to make sure that we can reconcile. The other piece of it is the web store channels activity. So we want to pull all of that data in and Sync with Connects is the only one that I know of that has a really reliable, nice solution for Woo WooCommerce. There's a couple of other ones that we've talked about before, but whenever we go and look at all of the various different channels and all of the various different connectors, that's why I'm excited that we have our guest here today. Oh, there we go back. All right, so here's the various different things. So whenever we're talking about Sync with Connects, you can see I've got my Amazon store. I've got my Shopify, I've got eBay, I've got WooCommerce, and then maybe over here I've got some shipping. All of these components need to get into QuickBooks, but you've got to be able to have a way to buffer what goes in. We don't want all of these channels going and syncing directly to QuickBooks. We need to be able to have some type of middleware where that activity comes in, we parse it the way that we want to, map it the way that we need to be able to see it in order to be able to have good accounting and bookkeeping, so that way our client can ultimately have good reports. So with all of that being said, I think that that's a really good opportunity for us to, earlier than normal, say that we're gonna actually do our drink toast here because there is so much that Syncs with Connects is going to show us that I wanna make sure that we give them enough time to walk us through all of their very various components and how that data can be mapped and pushed into QuickBooks. So I'm going to say, Heather, do you have your drink ready? Oh, I think you're I muted, Heather. It, and I'm muted, and now I'm not okay. muted. And we're on Facebook. So it's like a trifecta of winning right now. I have my drink, I'm not muted. We're on Facebook. It's all good. <laughs> but now you're muted, Liz. No, no, no. I'm unmuted. I'm unmuted. I, okay. had, I, I had an ice issue and I didn't oh, want no. everybody to hear my ice because I wanted to keep my drink cold. Yeah. And so whenever I poured so, it in my cocktail glass, it was like ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. So. Our drinks are so pretty this week. They are. Okay. So I'm going to show mine. And you've got yours. I got mine right here very fragrant yes very good so here is to sing with by connects um helping us to make our e-commerce clients bookkeeping super duper easy so thank you and welcome and yeah, we actually had a uh, contest at our company <laughs> to come up with the drink and everybody had to submit a couple of entries and we voted so this, this is what we came up with so I love I it. Fruit. I wanted to have fruit to put into mine and I didn't. And I was sad. I thought I did. Otherwise I would have been proactive about it, but then I was wrong. Well, it, mine smells amazing. That little bit of, of orange twist and then also the lime and the cranberry juice. Yeah. It's, it, it's, ah, it smells great. It smells yeah, festive is what it smells. Yes, definitely. So I want to make sure that everybody remembers our, our speaker is going to be Joseph. And then we've got Michelle and Dora, who is also here, and they're going to be helping out. So adding into the conversation as well. And I would definitely say over in chat to post questions because we have a lot of support that's with us today. And if you've got questions, I'm sure that we could get some answers. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pass the presenter role over to Joe. So you should be able to start sharing your screen now. Can you hear and see my screen? Yes. All is good, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So it's uh, Captain Joe will be giving his part of the demonstration today. Uh, so, all right. Fantastic. So, 
little description of what I'll be discussing today. We'll be going, giving us some screenshots of connects and some of the syncing options. I want to actually show you the website rather than just show you some screenshots just because it's easier and you can see the presentation. Give you some options for importing between QuickBooks and sales channels and how it's configured. Uh, also, how you can use Connects to you know map your orders like a rules engine and how to match deposits. I know a lot of users, you put all your orders in undeposited funds, you have to check a bunch of them off by hand and then put on the merchant fees. And if you have hundreds of sales or even worse, you have hundreds of sales and you're missing a few and you don't know which ones and why, we can help you figure that out. We also have a rules engine that allows you to dynamically map fields. So let's say you have a bunch of payment methods called Braintree and PayPal and PayPal credit. You can map them all just to PayPal instead of having all those methods create three separate items in QuickBooks. This helps keep your books nice and clean. Endura will be discussing the partner program that we offer for accountants. So let's give a little overview of Connex. Uh, how do we can simplify e-commerce accounting? You can use Connex as one app to connect all of your selling channels, shipping platforms, and payment processors. Uh, we offer over 30 integrations, you know, uh, Shopify, Amazon, Walmart, uh, you know, Authorized Net is one of our platforms. We work with PayPal, Square, and you can find out more information on our website. We work with both QuickBooks Online and the desktop edition of the software. Uh, we copy all the sales related data to QuickBooks, which includes uh, orders, uh, billing and shipping address, phone number, email, uh, total tax, uh, SKUs, product descriptions. And you can choose what and where to sync. So you can run our sync automatically on a scheduled basis, or you can run it once a day or once a week. Uh, you know, we have a lot of users that want to run it automatic, but some users want to just run it once a day at the end of the day. So we'll go over some of those settings. So what exactly do we map to QuickBooks? Uh, orders, products, customers, inventory, uh, quantity on hand. Pretty much we are like a Xerox machine. So we can take the copy of the order from Shopify, for instance, and put that into QuickBooks. Uh, we can look at the tags on a Shopify order and make decisions about a class. Uh, I know class tracking is very important for a lot of, um, a lot of users. Uh, sales tax by city so we can map quickbooks tax codes and you can have rules to say if it's from middlesex county massachusetts map this code if it's you know from los angeles map another code we support group codes uh, shipping information like tracking details tracking number uh, ship date uh, map deposits to quickbooks which we'll discuss a little bit later uh, we also work with custom fields in quickbooks so if you make something called you know doses per day or maybe order tags you can easily map that using our software and so here's just a screenshot of that connects our, our dashboard. And in our dashboard, you can take a look at all of your connections and what's going on, when was the last sync, um, any ch settings, changes that you want to make, such as if you want to uh, sync your Amazon selling report, or if you want to sync your Shopify sales, everything's there on the dashboard for you. You can also back up and restore your settings as a screenshot shows you. Uh, if you want to run a manual sync, uh, you can choose the dates or enter a list of order numbers. So this is ideal for your manual syncing users. So if you just need to catch up, if you haven't synced in a while, we offer these easy uh, intuitive forms. So let's talk about syncing orders to QuickBooks. We have a tool called an order previewer that you can use and you log in and you can see what's going to sync to QuickBooks. What are the fields going to look like? You could say, well, if I change my settings to sync shipped orders, what orders are going to appear in QuickBooks? This is a great way to test out your settings before actually putting anything into QuickBooks. You know, you wouldn't want to get a bunch of duplicate orders in there, or maybe you want to make sure that your fields are mapped correctly, and you can easily use our order previewer tool. Uh, we do support deposit matching uh, with our software. So we can automatically match your payouts from Amazon, Shopify payments, and Stripe. We also have PayPal, which we just recently added. So we'll go into QuickBooks, go into undeposited funds, check off all those orders, put them into your checking or business uh, account, along with the merchant fees. Uh, if you have multiple payment processors, you don't need to use the deposit matching tool. You can segregate those orders, uh, some for Stripe, some to the PayPal asset, and others to undeposited funds. And we'll discuss the rules engine a little bit later and, and do some Q&A. So here's just a screenshot of orders and undeposited funds. You see here that there's a ton of them to check off, as you can see. And if you're missing some, it could be a disaster, a nightmare to find out. But after running Connects, here's the end result. We put the deposit in for you. We add the fees. So we make it just super easy to do your deposit matching. We also offer a sync uh, from QuickBooks, and this makes us unique compared to other companies. Um, 
in terms of how it works, it's used primarily for phone orders. So somebody emails you or somebody calls you on the phone, you say, let me enter that into QuickBooks. You send it to your ship station or other shipping tool. And then we'll sync over the ship, uh, billing and shipping address, uh, order items, uh, taxes, products. And then you can go on a ship station, ship the sale. And you know we'll sync that back uh, from ship station to QuickBooks with all the tracking details. And it's real simple to enter an order into QuickBooks, you know, a billing and shipping address, as you can see here, along with just a SKU. Uh, this is also good for syncing orders to QuickBooks. Just want to show you some of the fields that we map to, like a customer, uh, just a real simple order that we can sync. Uh, products, uh, in terms of how does it work, we have a product previewer tool that allows you to preview products before they sync. So let's say you're going to create products in QuickBooks, you want to sync them to your website, you want to see this, what stock's going to sync, or you want to use QuickBooks as a product catalog, make products in QuickBooks and sync them to their site. Uh, we can easily uh, pull those through. Uh, we work with inventory, non-inventory, service, assembly, and groups, so we're compatible with all the product types in QuickBooks that we can map to. You can also sync your stock changes from various channels. So let's say you have an Amazon and eBay and a Walmart account, you can go into QuickBooks and update the stock of item one, two, three, and we can sync over that quantity of 10 to all of them for you. And we'll tell you what about your fillers and successes. So let's say your SKUs are mismatched or an item doesn't exist in the channel. We have a log that will tell you what's going on. We also offer some missing product mapping with our software. And the, uh, the advantage of that is let's say you're in, uh, you're in QuickBooks. You're, this is very common with a lot of our customers. They'll have mismatched products between QuickBooks on their website. So this will tell you that, all right, these products are missing from Amazon and QuickBooks, and you can easily use our tool to map them. And we have an autocomplete tool. So if you click edit, it will say ABC and give you all the products that exist in QuickBooks that you know start with ABC. So once you make all these mappings, you can click resync and it'll pull in all those orders and correct it. This will prevent you from creating duplicate products in QuickBooks and you know running out of stock. So what sets us apart from other companies? I know a lot of business can, businesses can sync orders to QuickBooks, but a rules engine is really what sets us apart. A lot of companies will have you know, a form and is a bunch of check boxes and it's very hard to understand. But with our tool, we have a rules engine you can say, if the order has this tag, then map this class, uh, dynamically map your payment methods, your deposit accounts, uh, SKUs, custom fields, uh, all encompassing rules. Uh, you can see here, here's some example rules that we have, such as mapping credit card payment methods and mapping SKUs. You can add a, you know, a ton of rules to your account. The rules engine is a way of customizing connects without actually having to change the source code of our software. So it's a way to change the functionality of just this account. So in summary, uh, Connects has a dashboard where you can view the successes and, and, and any sync issues that you have, uh, such as if you go into QuickBooks and change some accounts around and try to sync to them, the sync obviously wouldn't run. We have an order previewer that will tell you how to, you know, sync your sales, tell you what fields are available, how they look after adding rules. Uh, we have also the, the, a product previewer, and you can use our rules engine to dynamically map those fields to create reports in QuickBooks and easily match your deposits. So that'll end my part of the demonstration. Uh, we're open for a Q&A. Oh, we also have the, the partner program, I almost forgot. Uh, benefits of our program, discounts for your clients, um, revenue share for your firm, uh, training for partners and clients. Uh, we also have our partner newsletter and Dora can uh, give you more information on our partner program. Sure, yeah. So um, our partner program can be accessed at partner.syncwithconnects.com. And if you go to that page, um, when you fill out your information, there's going to be an option for two different kinds of partners. So as an accountant, you would select the VIP partner option. And uh, once you sign up as a partner, it's, it's free to join. It's really simple. So you will get our partner newsletter with information about all of our new features. So as Joe said, we recently um, implemented the deposit matching tool for PayPal. And we also have other uh, for other platforms. So you're going to get all the news about the features of Connex and how to onboard new clients. Uh, we also offer free training, uh, revenue share for your firm, uh, also discounts for your clients. Um, and also we have a free trial and we offer a trial set up for your new customers, for, for your clients to see if they would be a good fit for customers. So we really want to make sure that if people sign up with us, then they really are a good fit.
Um, I can type my email into the chat box here so you can uh, reach out to me and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have about our partner program. Well, I'm going to tell you that we absolutely love our partner program. So whenever we uh, hear about one, uh, because we're fiscally responsible, <laughs> we get excited about, you know, discounts and, and um, so we're glad that you're sharing the information about the partner program. And I would even say, uh, whenever it comes to some of the, the connections and the way that we import, uh, I think that you're still sharing, Joseph, maybe you want to back up and maybe give us a few minutes to explore some of the uh, uh, different connecting opportunities. Uh, yes, I could show you on our website uh, what integrations sure. that we have available. Uh, available integrations. So I've I have a few screens. So let me know if you can't see anything. Uh, can uh, you see this? We see it now. Yeah, okay, we're looking good. at it. Thank you. So we do work with Amazon, um, Europe, Canada, so U.S. We also can do a summary sale from Amazon. And you know, I'm going to even say that for those of you who have clients that are selling on Amazon, you mm -hmm. may not realize that there's all different kinds of of uh, locations. And so I've got clients that are selling not just here in the U.S., but they're selling on various different um, other Amazon channels. And so that's really, really key to making sure that you're pulling in the data because you've got different sales tax, you've got different um, liabilities that are involved in, and fees that are involved in those various channels. And one, uh, one feature that we have that's different from other companies is that we can summarize your sales as we've done here. So this is a customer, he's actually split his sales between uh, September and October. He wants to see how much money he made in both months. Uh, I know other companies can do something similar with a summary, but we put in the SKUs, which means you're gonna get the proper cost of goods sold and inventory changes in QuickBooks. You know, we break out current reserve fees, uh, Amazon fees, as you can see here, discounts. So a lot of tools are very high level, but we're very granular and very detailed, as you can see here for this particular customer. And we can do this with Shopify and other systems too. It's a great way to save room in your QuickBooks. Uh, you know, you could have a, a customer called Shopify Summary and you could have yep. a daily summary output. You know, why have 200 Amazon orders when you can just have one? I agree. And that's a really good point. So one of the things that we advise is to create a customer that's generic. Mm -hmm. And so whatever the sales channel is, that's what the customer name should be. So that way, whenever the data is importing, it's all mapped underneath that customer. And these summaries um, are, you know, these are invaluable because it allows us to be able to see what was the entire activity for the day. We don't need to see it customer by customer. We just want to see a swath of time. And that's going to be able to help us with dealing with our, our deposits and uh, various payment methods that our, our customers are able to use on our sales channels. Hmm. And you can see the, the shipping there. Yeah, so we have the shipping coupon. You can see reversal reimbursements. Uh, so we really give you awesome. a lot of really fine grain details for this particular customer. And it's I've, great because you know you can use our tool and split it between the two separate months. So his deposit, I think, happened in October uh, October 9th, but he had sales from September. So you can really get that accurate profit and loss report using our software. This is with Amazon that syncs every two weeks. And I noticed there when, when, can you open that sales receipt back up? I just had a question, a couple of questions actually about it. Um, the, the big question there is it looks like with the AD18041, it says that it's grouped from, are those transaction numbers? Yes, those are the order numbers from, he has an, a settlement report from Amazon. These yep. are the numbers that it's grouped from. So instead of having 16 lines with a quantity of one, we just merge them into 16. So you can still search then um, for, if you use the advanced find feature in QuickBooks, you could still search for that number. Yes, you could You could still, I believe you can still search for that. I'm not sure. I, I think, what is it, control F? Yeah. Uh, oh, oops, okay. So we can try, if you learn That'll something new, you learn, right? learn something new every day, but yeah, so control know, F or, uh, yeah, what's, uh, yep. You know, I, I wanna also point out here, we're looking at desktop. So you actually connect with both desktop and online. And so a lot of our viewers are looking for desktop solutions. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to point out that you do both. 
Yes, we do work with both QuickBooks Online and the desktop editions. Um, you know, we have users that migrate all the time. I think QuickBooks Online is great when you have a lot of users in one system, but if you're looking for you know, those granular reports like sales orders, assemblies, um, we work with that. You know, we have a really strong QuickBooks desktop integration. So our, our desktop sync was started back in 2012. So it's you know, very advanced and uh, very highly functional. That's great. And, and uh, you know, looking at that transaction, the thing that was nice about it is being able to do exactly what you were saying, Heather, that you needed to maybe in the reverse order. Maybe you were on Amazon, you had a client who did a, uh, it seems like refunds, returns and refunds are the trickiest piece. And so maybe you have an order that you need to go and search that history. You can right. see it in Amazon, but you want to come back over to QuickBooks and search it. But then the opposite can be true. So maybe you have a deposit that didn't quite match up as expected. And so you could see those orders in QuickBooks and then go back over to the sales channel and then search it that way. So I like that you've got the data in both places. And yes. I just, oh, go ahead, sorry. Um, one last thing, and I'm sorry to interrupt you. We do work with refunds. We can actually take the refunds and merge them onto the order so it'll match the deposit. So this is just a negative quantity one. So we do work with summarizing the refunds and changing the fees. Nice. Now those, that's one of the trickiest parts. Heather, did you have a question? Um, yes, but now I can't remember what it was. Oh, okay, well, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and say the other thing here is that people who, um, it looks like we have some viewers that aren't familiar with Amazon. And, and so looking at those dates might be just slightly unsure. Why wouldn't we do it on the daily? But one of the things that happens with Amazon is it actually clears every two weeks. So you would have a posting that you could push in, be able to say, here's the things that we sold. And then there's a clearing deposit that comes in for all of that activity. And that's just the way that Amazon does it. Other sales channels have their own way. Web stores, you would want to go in and see what's the end of day's business and make sure that you have uh, that activity summarized if you wanted to do it by the day. I remembered my question. <laughs> Yay! So my question was, you know, a lot of us are looking at this and this is clearly what our clients need, right? They need this level of detail that's gonna tie out to the reports in Amazon and the other <clears throat> platforms that they're using. So my question is, is first, the first question is, is how easy is it to set up? And then my second question is, um, what types of support does Connects offer um, for you know, both the accountant and their clients when they're you know, getting started using it? Uh, Michelle, I believe you can answer those questions. We do offer a customer success team that provides an onboarding and our sales team also provides trials, um, trial user support. Uh, Michelle, could you, I think you can answer these. Sure. Um, as Joe mentioned, two different flavors of support. We have a pretty robust um, knowledge slash help center with lots of videos and guides um, that's ever changing and constantly being updated. So that is a resource. Um, trial users uh, do get help setting up the app um, and making the connection. So, and that's whether you're the accountant that's setting it up for your clients or the end business user, user that's looking to get it set up as well. Um, and once we get you set up, we do offer a 14 day free trial. So the software is fully functional for all of our users. We don't gate any um, settings or functionality. So you can really test it out and see if it's going to be a good fit and check out that data that's syncing. And then ongoing support with customer success. We do offer full onboarding sessions, which are screen sharing sessions for our users and then ongoing help desk support um, with, with tier one, two and three support um, as well for technical issues. Fantastic. It is, it's great. And you know, the thing that I would say to people who, you know, if you're already an e-commerce bookkeeper or accountant, these are things that are familiar to you, but they still can be tricky. And so having that support is really, really nice. And on the flip side of that, if you're somebody who is now in this situation where you have clients who are trying to get online and you're not really sure what are some of those things and pieces that you need, this is the kind of tool that you need to make sure that you're pulling in those, those parse, pieces and parses that I was talking about, those components, to be able to map it into QuickBooks in a way that's not going to have a thousand different customers importing 
with a thousand right. different transactions because <laughs> one of the things that we know some of our sales channels do is they advertise these different importing abilities. Well, I've been doing e-commerce for a while and I, I would recommend not <laughs> not using those and just just skip you know that step save yourself a headache and just go ahead and use a tool like this that's going to actually be able to pull in the data you're going to be able to map it and so essentially what's happening is all of the data is coming in to sync with connects so it's a middleware and all the data is there. And then once you're, you have all that data, then you can tell it, how do you want it to come into QuickBooks? And that's where you're able to say, I want to be able to do it on the daily or by the, the schedule that Amazon is using. Or you can say, I want to be able to track my inventory or you know, maybe you don't need to have all of the inventory detail levels. But you're able to pull in that data so that way the month end bookkeeping is easier because we know what our clients need is to be able to make uh, really good decisions about how profitable they are. And you can spin your wheels selling a lot and not making enough profit if you don't see all the details. Where are you most profitable? Which, which bundles or which types of, of um, products are selling right now? Fantastic. So if we go back over into your dashboard instead of looking at QuickBooks for a minute. Just since we've got the live product here, I like that there's the different sales channels and I just wanna point that out that we have clients that are selling in multiple places. So right. you can push all of your data into here. And so that's why I was saying that middleware, it's kind of like the funnel, it's catching everything and then you can filter what it is that you want it to, to come into QuickBooks. And we had a couple of questions about uh, shipping connectivity. And I, I would say that most people are going to connect to their sales channel unless thinking about those various components, your shipping is outside of your sales channel. And then you would have a more complex scenario and you would definitely need to make sure that your mapping uh, is taking into account those various, those various components. Um, All right, so we're watching you. What are you pulling up right here? <laughs> so this is our order previewer software, and this allows you to take a look at what an order would look like prior to syncing. So this is just a test account that I have with just tell me data. You know, what's, what this is what the order number is going to look like. This will be the payment method. Uh, you know, this will be the, the product item name and QuickBooks quantity. So if you were to run a query of, let's say, your Shopify site, you know, what's going to happen in QuickBooks. All right, I'm going to get, you know, these hundred sales they are going to have this particular SKU. So you can go on, let's say to our rules engine and delete this and add a rule for, let's say, mapping the payment method. And let's say we'll call it, you know, map credit cards and uh, payment method, you know, let's say, you know, contains, you know, the word credit. I think it's, you know, so you want to map it all to CC. So you can go back to our previewer and see whether the rule actually worked. And so you map everything to the payment method to CC as I've shown you here. So this is a great way to test to see if your fields are mapped properly rather than, without this, what you'd have to do is set up the software, sync to QuickBooks. Oh, I didn't do a rule right. Oh, I didn't check off a box and then delete it and sync it again. It, it sure. saves you a lot of steps. Well, this gives you a lot of flexibility to it be really able does. to have con some con uh, control. I know with a lot of other companies that it's kind of a black box, like, all right, so I, I think I set it up right. But at least with this, you can preview it. I mean, what if you made a mistake and, oh, no, I meant to, I meant to map payment methods. And now I have 200 orders. Well, with QuickBooks, you have to delete them one by one. So it's like, all right, control D, control D. And, <laughs> you know, you're, it can be very cumbersome while having a piece of software like this. I agree. And so let's scroll back up to our navigation bar. So available integrations. I don't know if that'd be best to show that here. If, okay, so that's showing what is actually connected, but maybe on your website, I would love to let, show people what all you connect to because you have a ton of connections. I see, and that's yeah, one so of, you want the integrations page, this one? I do, yes. yeah, I do. 
Because this is what's so amazing about your tool. Mm -hmm. Not do you just connect to one and do a really nice job of that, but you have tons of connections here. For those people who are using Walmart, you know, that's, that one's a tricky one that not everybody connects to. Yeah, they, it's kind of a, a, a smaller following, but Walmart, uh, it's definitely a good solution. We do this sync of sales uh, from Walmart to QuickBooks, and we do the stock changes from QuickBooks back to, uh, to Walmart. We also work with Square really well. If you're looking for a good point of sale solution, we're going to, we have planned to add the deposit matching tool for Square. So for most payment processors, our software can locate the orders, add merchant fees and, and match them. So you don't have to worry about all that deposit matching. Well, this is amazing. It is. Well, this is very comprehensive. It's kind of like, it's like one-stop shopping. I mean, a lot of other companies you'll see, oh, they just do it. They have a Shopify app or they have a big commerce app yeah. and that's great. Yeah. But if you're selling on multiple channels, well, then you have to find another app. And pretty soon you have three or four apps for three or different integrations and something broke down. Who do I contact? They all sync, they all sync data a different way. You have to configure all the way you want. And with us, it's just one configuration. That's one do system. You when, when you, when you, for your subscription, are you billed by how many connections you have, or are you billed by just a, a flat fee, or how does that work? Well, here at Connects, we're all about simplicity. Uh, okay. We used to build, we used to build by number of connections, but it was very confusing. So we build by okay. number of orders and features. Okay. So let's say you want to do our, we bill annually. So this is just the, what it would be a month, but let's say at 588 a year, 1800 order numbers. Uh, you know, 1800 unique orders, order one, order two, order three, uh, you know, real basic, just one way sync to QuickBooks. And then when you bump up to a higher level, you can do the deposit matching tool, mm -hmm. inventory wow. sync, summary mm -hmm. sales. So it, it's very simple. You could have four or five connections and, you know, be on, let's say this, this pricing tier. And then, you know, as we help you grow with connects, you know, we, we help you automate you know, the accounting so that as a business owner or accountant, you can do other things to grow your business. So your, your number of orders starts to increase and then you can kind of grow with us. And then when you get past, you know, 90,000 order numbers a year, then you're in, you know, you need an ERP like a net suite, but. Gotcha. So when we look at, sorry, Liz. Go ahead, go ahead. When we look at the pro to the super, right? Mm -hmm. Are those the, yeah. So the pro to the super, it doesn't matter how many connections. So I could have, Amazon and Shopify and Walmart um, on either one of those really what the difference is is between the um, the, the volume of orders is that correct yes so it's, okay. it's about order volume and primarily about features um, yeah you know, when well, it comes fantastic. to connections it's very um, it's just difficult to bill on number of connections like well if right. I had let's say stripe to match my deposits and then I have a Shopify connection is that really two connections I mean really we're it's really one I just do deposit matching so it's very it's kind of a gray area so we decided just to drop the the connections billing and just stri stick strictly to more like unique order numbers I mean here at connects we're all about simplicity and we're trying yeah. to offer straightforward simple upfront pricing and I love that. And I respect that so much because yeah. there's so many times where you look for an app, um, you know, for a client and those little, you know, connection, those little, those little details that you don't quite uncover until you're pretty far into, um, you know, an integration or, or, you know, into a discovery. So having it up front makes it really easy to decide whether or not it's going to be right and what you're going to end up paying. Mm -hmm. So I really yeah, like we just that want, a lot. We just give straightforward upfront pricing. Yep. I mean, this is what it costs. It. We also, you can buy additional orders. So let's say you need another 2000 orders. Mm -hmm. You can pay just a, a set fee just for that additional 2000. So that way you don't have to, you know, this is a fairly large upgrade. If you were to, this is a, about twelve hundred dollars. Right. Well, you could yeah. pay us a couple of hundred and just get a couple thousand orders. Maybe you got really busy on okay. Christmas to hold you over. So there's, <laughs> you know, ways yeah. in between. That's, That's exactly what I was thinking. It's Christmas time. People start buying now right, right. and, it, you know, sales will look inflated for a few months and then yeah. it goes back to normal. And right. another thing we do differently is that it's issue unique order numbers annually. So, uh, you know, if you do 30,000 sales in December and then you do a hundred orders, you know, you do 20,000 sales in December and then a hundred orders a month for every month, you're still on the 199 plan. We don't you know, we don't change your monthly fee based on, you know, your order volume for that particular month. That one month. Yeah. 
I think this is a great time, Liz, for me to uh, put the poll up. What do you think? I I agree with you. And so uh, I'm going to say, go ahead and put that poll up. And then I'm also going to, Joseph, it's okay. I'm going to start sharing my screen as well. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things I want to make sure that our peers are aware of uh, you may want to stop sharing and then I'll start sharing. And then I would definitely say, if you're interested in more information, be sure to answer that poll. Yeah, I'll leave it up for just a little bit. It is fantastic. I'm I definitely going to be adding it to my toolbox. Our accountant toolbox. Our accountant toolbox for sure. So, Joseph, I don't think I can share with with you sharing. So, if you want to stop sharing, then I'll start sharing. Uh, yeah, I'll stop the share. And uh, okay. Fabulous. So, there's a couple of questions here. Uh, I I can answer these. Uh, would you like me to answer these, or do you want to wait till the end? I say go for it. if you want to answer a couple of those and and then we'll switch over in a second but uh, uh, let's take a look here so actually I do have a client that integrate uses square for services he's always forgetting to put in the customer name uh, well that would be a question for square uh, we don't we wouldn't be able to validate an order but we we are adding we have business logic where if there's a customer name on an order we will sync that to quickbooks um, we're hoping to have that maybe the next 15 to 30 days so we do we do sync it if it's there but uh, i would contact square about maybe making it like a required field uh, i also see another question here about square uh, oh, i'm trying to I think i lost the chat here oh, okay here it is for square fours are paid online and uses billing and shipping address should appear. Uh, the worst paid or cool everything square. Okay, last call for voting. Okay, it looks like Michelle answered that. Okay, yeah, I think we're, uh, yeah, I think I've well, answered all the questions on the chat. And, and if people want more information, we're, we definitely want them to answer that poll. And so, um, Heather, I don't know if you want to count down that poll, but the yep, thing that I want to do. Count it down. Five, four, three, two and one thanks guys so we always love our apps whenever they're on apps.com so if i come over here one of the things that i was looking at is how many times you're listed here because of the various different uh platforms that you connect to so i think this is great for all of those people who are interested in do you connect to this do you connect to that i, no, that I think it's fabulous good. that you've got all yeah, of we, we put here, multiple. So um, we put multiple listings on there because when you say connects for QuickBooks, they don't understand what that does. But when you're saying Amazon by connects, it's a little more, a little more clear, and we've, that's helps uh, users understand who we are and uh, what we do. I agree. I think that sometimes e-commerce just feels like it's overwhelming, and so uh, being able to list some of those details, like we need the details in QuickBooks, is important. Well, Heather and I have got another thing that we want to share with you today that is really cool. And it actually goes along with what we're talking about, which is in some areas, you might want to dive a little bit deeper into some data and get some better results, which is exactly what we've been talking about with e-commerce. But sometimes it's important to be able to also have really good tools for offering advice. Oh, and I was going to go back and look at my advice or advice, <laughs> but Stassable is an app that Heather and I found that actually gives more detail about trying to look at clients who have reoccurring revenue. And so you might think about that as somebody who is e-commerce related, you have to do some investing in the relationship to maybe pull them in to, to your sales. And so it doesn't just have to be e-commerce. It could be clients that have any type of other kind of reoccurring metrics like, um, oh, thinking about a subscription-based business. And so if you've got metrics to be able to evaluate what's your ORI on those types of clients, then you can, you can say, is it my investment worth the funds? So I'm going to advance right here it looks like it's 
Oh, there we go. It's stuck and then it advanced twice. So whenever you log into Sassable, the thing that Heather and I found very impressive about this tool that we wanted to share with you is that you've got this dashboard view of your monthly recurring revenue. So in one place, you're able to see all of the data and it rolling over from month to month. So you're able to see various different things that are, that are helpful here to being able to calculating your monthly reoccurring revenue and then your return rates. And so being able to see, is the business sustainable that you're talking about? And if so, how long is it sustainable? So this is the Sassable um, dashboard. And the way that it gets this data is it actually connects to QuickBooks. It pulls out that data and then gives you this dashboard for being able to see your reoccurring revenue and make some projections. And some of these, I mean, the, the metrics that they're giving us here are metrics that are not easily calculated. So, you know, the, the process to figure out what the lifetime value um, of a customer that's on a recurring, you know, payment schedule or subscription type um, billing schedule, um, that requires taking information, but usually we export it to a spreadsheet and we make a bunch of calculations. Um, and it's not something that's, that's typically easy to do. It's doable, but it's not easy. So really having the ability to have an app that goes into your QuickBooks Online, pulls the data out based on what the recurring schedule is, and being able to, in a click of a button, basically give you those metrics it's really useful because your lifetime value is such a key component and such a key driver of what you should be spending in your sales cycle, right? Well, so even taking this data and saying, okay, I need to go get some money for investment. Well, how can you tell the banker that this is what my projections are unless you have a tool right. like this? A hundred percent. Absolutely. But and even selling a business, it's like you need these types of data, these types of tools to be able to, to help make some business decisions. A hundred percent. So the thing that's inside of, of Sassable is educational text box. So if you go, okay, I'm not really sure what the MRR is. You can actually open up a text box and it's going to talk to you about the monthly reoccurring revenue and what it measures and how it calculates that and how what's the different drivers of that data. So you're able to see what's your churn. So maybe that's really important to you to be able to see, do you have a high churn rate? And that's something that maybe you need to get a better handle on. Why are people churning? Or maybe, you know, you're happy about some of that, that um, churn because means that you're getting some new people in, but you also want to sustain your old ones. Otherwise, your reoccurring revenue is not going to be sustainable. So you can look at these different data drivers and you can see where is this, um, these details coming from. And you can see here that it's connected to QuickBooks. So by clicking on those different pieces of information, it opens it up and it tells you, here's the various invoices or sales receipts that are coming directly from your QuickBooks data. And this is connecting to QuickBooks Online data. And then if I come over here and I look at I'm able to calculate, like Heather said, it's not easy to calculate what your customer acquisition cost is, but you've got a little widget inside of Sassable that you can actually click on and it's going to give your CAC. And so you're able to um, pull those numbers in and present them to your client to say, okay, you're spending too little, you're not spending enough, or maybe your job is, is to just present this to your client and they can dig a little bit deeper, but either way, Right. This is a tool to be able to find out, uh, you know, as far as management decisions, which direction your client should go in. And then you can see here's the lifetime value of that customer. So what do we expect them to purchase? Uh, and, you know, in a situation like this, I would say, where is it um, tie into e-commerce? Maybe it's a scenario where you've got, I'm thinking about Christmas too. So if you've got a whole bunch of bags that you're selling online and maybe they're store bags for um, going in and, and going to the grocery store, or going into your retail locations and you need various bags. Well, you could have all those various bags on a website and people could come in and they can buy them from you. And so that's your e-commerce channel, but then you need to know what's the lifetime customer value. So how many times are these 
the store is going to come back and buy off of your website. So you need to have some type of way to calculate what is that customer worth to you. Yeah, it's really, it makes, it makes something that is typically very complicated, very simple, which is really nice. And it gives you the information that you need very quickly. You know, um, I agree. And, and the other thing that's really cool is that you've got this, um, so you've got your chart of accounts that's pulling into QuickBooks, but there's some cases that you might want to change the mapping. You actually have control inside of Sassable to change the mapping, which is great because, you know, sometimes in data we see balance sheet accounts coming in and they're not quite mapped the way that we want them to be. And so we actually have some control over how uh, the accounts are coming in and how we want them to be viewed and mapped and, and um, then here we've got oh we can also say over here inside of Sassable do we want to ignore a customer maybe it's a one-time project and so they're not going to be reoccurring at that rate maybe you can say uh, I went and did an installation so that way they can be a reoccurring customer but that installation piece needs to be ignored or maybe that customer was just a one-time installation and so they're not going to be an ongoing reoccurring revenue. So you can go in and ignore different customers. And then you can see here that you can actually adjust, adjust your matrix. So you could go in and um, click on the various different areas and you can edit some of those details to be able to say, oh, this was, this was something that maybe, again, was a project or a one-time thing. And so you want to exclude that data or maybe you need to include other data. You can go in there and actually edit some details. Is, is anybody in the group just I'm going to ask you, you can you can uh, show um, this or put, put this in the chat to us. Is anybody working with startups, um, specifically, you know, tech companies that are just getting started? This is information that is really valuable to them. I've worked with a couple of startups um, and, and this is information they need in order to put a business plan together. Right. And so being able to have this and go to a bank for funding or find investors. Um, the other thing that we need to think about is how many of you are doing recurring fixed fee billing to your clients, right? So this tool could actually tell you what your client's lifetime value is based on the recurring revenue in your firm. And you can find out what your firm acquisition, your customer acquisition costs are so that you can actually make changes in your, in your firm and uh, increase your profit. So the more data that we have, the better. So I feel like if this is something that you feel your clients could benefit from, the best way to test it out would be to have it, connect it to your own firm, go through, use it yourself and, and see the impact that it makes on your own business. Uh, and that's a great point. And Heather, the first connection is free. So right. for your exactly. firm, it's free to go play with. Yep, and huge we, opportunity. We love it. Here. Huge. I mean, people are, you see people are innovating, especially during the pandemic, right? People are innovating and they're trying to find ways, um, you know, to, you know, to, to, to earn income. And for example, I have a client that is a fitness instructor. And so she had a partnership with a gym that had to shut down. And so what she did is she started during the early days of the pandemic, she started offering, um, basically live streams of the classes that she was teaching for no charge. Then when things started, I don't want to say things are back to normal by any means, but when they started <laughs> to be a little more normal um, back, you know, towards the end of the summer, she redesigned her business model and now it's subscription based, right? right? So now what she's doing is the people that were attending her classes, um, they actually pay her a monthly fee to actually live stream the classes. So um, now she's got the subscription, you know, model that she never had before, which is pretty cool. She was, she was charging by the class and now she's doing the subscription model. So this is absolutely relevant to her. Well, you know what they say, and she did like, she did the perfect example is they say, start giving a few little things away for free. Yeah. And then once they're, they're a believer in you, then you anchor them. And so yeah. that's exactly what she did. And so her sales have like quadrupled from before pandemic? So, I mean, she's a great <laughs> example of a, a subscription-based business that this kind of data is really, really valuable for her. Totally. And, you know, marketing agencies or even IT services or landscaping and pests. I mean, anything that you think of that's reoccurring, 
alarm monitoring or regional revenue uh, that's re reoccurring or internet subscriptions. Anything that's reoccurring is, is nice to be able to go in and have some projections over the life. And this is free for one use. So there's a small fee, it's not very expensive. I don't remember exactly what the price was, but uh, Heather, maybe you remember, but I know that to test it, it's just free. Yeah. And there's individual plans and there's unlimited plans. So there's lots of opportunities there. But we wanted to go ahead and share that information because Heather and I um, really, really thought that, that app was very cool. And Michael Lee, many of us, you know, really respect him and know him as a great source of, of information. And he is uh, involved in helping them to make sure that it's a really good uh, right. app and platform. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Make sure to go over to the website and visit the Appy Hour. You can see additional episodes there and you can watch past episodes and you can see our um, bar book, which has got our various different apps that have came on and shared information with us. And so you can go back and you can look at the links and the resources. So if you have questions and, and didn't get them answered all today, then you can go over to our website and you could, for example, click on uh, Sync with Connect and then you could uh, get some more, more information that way. Make sure that you're connecting with us on our Facebook lounge and then our Facebook groups and then register for our Zooms because the Zoom is how you're going to be able to have live chat with us and get some of those answer, uh, questions answered live. And then Heather, you want to talk about our upcoming Yes, I'm super excited. On November 10th, we're going to have our uh, our partner ADP come on the show uh, yet again. But this time, we're going to be focusing on ADP products for benefits and retirement planning. So, mm -hmm. you know, we know that they offer payroll, um, but did you know that they offer also offer a suite of other products that can help your clients like benefits and retirement planning? Um, so we're going to learn about that. One of the interesting ones that is kind of been a big topic over the last couple of years is PEO, right? So basically um, outsource. And I, I don't even know, it, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's kind of like outsourced payroll. So basically they become the employer. They're the ones that are paying the taxes and you're, you're basically paying them for your own employees. And the reason that you would do that is by saving money um, benefits, right? Because the larger the group, the lower the benefit costs. So by joining um, a PEO system, you can actually, your clients can save a lot of money on the different benefits they offer employees. So we're gonna learn about that. I'm super excited for that because it's gonna be really interesting. It's not something that we've talked about before. I agree, but it, it's very useful information. So I want to say thank you to everyone for joining us. I want to say a thank special thank you to Joseph and Dora and Michelle. Yeah, thank you for having us. It was just a, a real pleasure. Thank you everyone for interacting on the chat box. And until next time, everybody Bye. stay happy. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.